Welcome back to Cinema Flex Music Picks. I'm Davey, your host with the most, the beast with the least. The least we can do today is, of course, day three of Jimmy Stewart. So it's a wonderful month. And I've just picked up from the title and the screenshot. It's Anatomy of a Murder, the Otto Preminger uh, film from uh, 1959. Um, for its time, quite a long film. It's, it's um, two hours and 50 odd minutes. Or two hours and forty one to be slightly more precise. Um, in black and white, um, and features a wonderful score by Duke Ellington, um, who appears in the film um, as a piano player, funnily enough, um, and um, also is the film debut of Mr. George C. Scott, a fantastic actor in his own right, um, and a very young Ben Gazzara, who would go on to be a character actor of note for. For many many years to come but of course we're here primarily to look at things from the Jimmy Stewart point of view so very briefly the plot of and had to be ever murder Ben Gazzara is a young soldier accused of murdering the first degree um, because he has shot and killed a man who he says raped his wife played by the wonderful Lee Remick um, and the defence, um, led by Jimmy Stewart, are training him to plead insanity um, while the prosecution seeks cold blood and murder and in some rather old fashioned scenes um, almost implying that, hmm, look at her, she was dressed nice and she's a pretty girl, she was asking for it. Hmm, those parts of, uh, of the prosecution haven't aged too well. However, it's a film of its time, so we can't judge or uh, our, in, install our standards onto 1959. Um, so, at the first glance, you might think, well, is this just going to be a standard, um, we're clearly in the right, they're clearly in the wrong, and how's their plucky underdog lawyer going to get um, this soldier, this American hero, off for, for doing the right thing and defending his wife's honour against this rapist? Or is it more interesting than that? Well, it is. Because what the film does is it never answers the question of whether or not um, the soldier and the wife are telling the truth. It sows so many seeds that the whole story is concocted, that Ben Gazzara is himself quite the psycho um, and mur did murder in cold blood, beats his wife regularly himself, um, is incredibly jealous and also that Lee Remick was having an affair with this guy so there was no rape, she, she was just having an affair with the guy and got caught and you know, they've now turned it into rape to cover up the fact that Ben Gazzara murdered the, the guy having a, f a fling with his wife. So rather wonderfully the film doesn't, and again with all these movies we are going to go into spoilers because it's 1959 and you know, if you haven't seen it by now. Um, but rather wonderfully the film doesn't doesn't say where you should land. It, it lets you choose if you want to believe one or the other and at first you will side with the defence because it's her plucky Jimmy Stewart uh, country lawyer I mean he, you'll have seen the, the, the kind of scene in a million movies I may just be a simple country lawyer up against this big city prosecutor that's where this comes from Jimmy Stewart has almost exactly that line um, and he plays plays, uh, plays that up the, you know they're throwing all the resources at it and he's, you know, he may not know much but he knows the law kind of thing um, and and presents the, the prosecution as being, uh, you know, they wear fine suits and things so, you know, at first glance we are conditioned because we know Jimmy Stewart um, um, and surely he wouldn't defend horrible people um, we're conditioned to believe that side of the story but as the film progresses enough doubt is so, enough reasonable doubt um, that we can't possibly make up our mind um, and what the film asks you ultimately um, including with this kind of soul bass uh, um, 
poster art is to put the pieces together but they never add up to a complete whole. The film's not going to give you an easy way out. It's not going to give you that respite. Um, there's not going to be a flashback to the events. Um, you are going to be asked to make your mind up. And ultimately, it's going to question the American judicial system in its entirety. Because it's going to question the validity of... Is it right that the winner, essentially, is just the person with the most convincing argument, not not that the facts have to be particularly on their side, but just that they have to be particularly endearing to a jury of their peers. So we as an audience become jurors almost, um, and we are conditioned again to like Jimmy Stewart, and so it goes for the jurors, they're conditioned to feel sorry for the young girl, or they're conditioned to to say, well, he's a war hero. So, you know, of course he wouldn't have done something like this. And then the prosecution's case includes things like, well, she was dressed like a whore that evening. You know, again, not my words. Um, or, well, he was in the war, so he was trained to kill and made it easier, you know. Um, so the film asks us to make our minds up, but it will never give us the answer that we're quite looking for. And that's, that's really the wonderful nature of this. It doesn't give you a cop out. Um, because it isn't really about this one case. It's about the system. About bucking the system. About the flaws inherent to the system. The, to sow the seeds of beyond a reasonable doubt. All you really need to do is have a charismatic lawyer um, and some photogenic defendants, and, you know, be able to charm a jury. Um, again, popular theme of the time, which would be explored in films like obviously Twelve Angry Men, with um, Jimmy's great friend Henry Fonda, um, and um, about this time as well, we had um, Inherit the Wind, um, kind of based on the Scopes Monkey trial. Uh, with um, Spencer Tracy and, and Frederick March, um, which again asks questions about, you know, when do when do facts come into play here? Or, you know, is it just on charisma alone that we we really have trials? Um, it's it's a a wonderful film from from also Preminger who made these these very deep and and thoughtful films that that challenged American society and challenged um, the American way of life as an outsider. Um, bizarrely, he would go on to you know, play Mr. Freeze in the 66 Batman, so he had a very odd career. Um, but as a director, especially late 50s, early 60s, he made these remarkable films that were groundbreaking in their takedown of a, a post-Eisenhower America. Um, of the, uh, you know, something that maybe David Lynch would even go into later on in terms of um, Blue Velvet, you know, where you scrape just under the surface of the American dream and, and you'll find, you know, what's rotten and, you know, all the, the bugs under the, under the soil. So that's, that's, kind of the, that's kind of my thesis on, on Anatomy of a Murder. Um, again, George C. Scott is just absolutely sensational in this um, because um, we know that he um, can be a horrible, nasty lawyer. In fact, he was even in the remake of um, Inherit the Wind when he played the the fundamentalist um, Matthew, uh, oh, I can never remember his name, but he played the Frederick March part, um, essentially, um, almost reprising his kind of role here, you know, the same kind of um, unlikable prosecutor. Um, but because we have that attachment to Jimmy Stewart, the All-American, um, we are inclined to side with him from the start. But then from seeing, you know, I mean, he's into fishing, he likes modern jazz music, pop. He's not, um, you know, he's, he's nice to his buddy, even though he's a, a drunk, you know, so he's a nice guy. But is he every bit as corrupt as anybody in this film? Because he sows the, you were insane that night, weren't you? Weren't you? 
you know, Jimmy's the one that puts that in the soldier's head, tells him essentially this is how you, you're going to plead, and we'll find the evidence to, to make that case. That's every bit as corrupted as, um, as a prosecution, um, and probably more so when you're talking about the fact that he took a man's life and Jimmy's job is to try and get him out of this. So Jimmy at this point had had made all the Anthony Mann westerns, he'd done Vertigo a couple of years earlier, so he had played with the morally ambiguous role. Um, he had subverted his own persona by this point. Um, and I think this subverts it again, because what on the surface would appear to be him going back to the oh gee shucks Jimmy Stewart might be the most morally ambiguous of them all because it's a character who is the G shucks Jimmy Stewart but may be more flawed because he doesn't realise he's that flawed or if he does he's happy to live with it and that might be scarier than some of the hmm some of the kind of characters they played in those darker films, which I'm sure we'll have a look at in the coming weeks. So, we're at just over 11 minutes, so I'm going to try and make these shorter. So, thanks very much for watching, folks. Um, thanks for watching the last few episodes. I know um, they haven't appealed to all my subscribers, but that was never really the point. It's really an exploration of, of uh, one, one theme for a month, um, for my own gratification and also um, to create some content, um, you know, a backlog of things, and and also I've I've um, been a bit heavy on music in the last um, last month or so, so it was also a chance to deep dive back into film. Um, so you know, and I appreciate people have joined up um, because of of Jimmy Stewart month. So thank you very much if you have done, and thank you to Sea of, sea of Tranquility subscribers who've joined as well. Um, and people from Jamie Laszlo's group, um, you're more than welcome. Um, I hope we, I hope I, um, aren't too dry for you. Um, the the videos are normally a bit more razzmatazzy than this. I mean, you know, we're going to use that as a prop one of these days, a terrifying portrait that friend. But um, tomorrow we'll find another film and. We'll continue with um, Box Out Wednesdays, which I think will just be a pickup video this month um, because I need to do one anyway. Um, so what I've picked up this past month uh, film-wise, so we'll, we'll probably do that. Um, but um, that's for tomorrow. For today, my friends, be very careful out there, huh? Love and mercy, my dear. Love and mercy.